We're recording? Oh. Hi guys, I'm Perseus Westbrooks with a reaction to two 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 shit. Um what the heck was am I reacting to? Uh what was the name of it? The hidden meaning behind uh I forget names got names, I'm sorry. The hidden meaning behind the purge. I will be reacting to it. You're welcome for me reacting to it. Let's get into what I'm reacting to it. I guess. Whatever. <laughs> Let's get started. Earthling Cinema. Greetings and welcome to Earthling Cinema. I am your host, Garrix Wormuloid. This week's artifact is The Purge, starring nine-time X Games gold medalist Tony Hawk. The film takes place on Earth in the 21st century, when apparently things got so bad with Doritos Tacos and Snapchat and shit, the government decided it would be an improvement to legalize murder. Not all the time, of course. That would be crazy. Just one day a year, and not even a full day. Half a day. That's almost less than not doing it at all. Our protagonist is James Sanders. Him, the best damn home security salesman this side of the Mississippi Ocean. Yeah. He's living the American dream, a beautiful home, a nondescript wife, and kids who treat him with semi-hostile indifference. Okay. Okay. The Sandins sit down to a leisurely dinner, not particularly concerned about the impending free-for-all fuckfest. And five minutes before it begins, they remember, oh yeah, all crimes are about to be legal. Better lock up now. Christ, dude, you didn't even set an alarm? Almost immediately, the son lets in an injured guy off the street, and the daughter's boyfriend sneaks in. It's fine, though, because James cuts down that punk boyfriend as any proud father should, even ones that work in entertainment and don't seem all that tough. <laughs> Anyway, just when you think the movie is going to end after 30 minutes, a gang of rascally teens shows up wearing masks on their faces and guns on their hands. They're hunting that injured homeless man for sport, you see, and they want to finish him off real, real bad. We failed to deliver the homeless swine! They tell James to hand him over, or else they'll come inside and the purge all over not up to par, which is not a great yet move, so much because James' security concept. system is a piece of shit. I didn't like the first the one or beat three. Up the injured I did enjoy the parts two, that is my shit. Duct tape. The Milky Way Galaxy's favorite tape. He's gonna break this tape! But their heart isn't in it. They decide that just like philosopher Thomas Petty, they can't do him like that. The teens break into their house and destroy everything, but also occasionally stop to watch the family in silent contemplation. This confusingly bipolar strategy allows the Sandins to off a few of them, but not before the leader kills James with a knifey to the tum tum. Aww. The neighbors show up and wipe out the rest of the teens, but now they want to kill the Sandins too. Because because there's some stepford ass dill holes. That's when the homeless guy decides to come back into the movie and save the day. Mrs. Sandin refuses to kill the neighbors because at this point she's riding the Tom Petty wave pretty hard. The purge ends and the homeless guy heads back. Well, not home, but somewhere good, probably. Good, probably. The purge posits that the human psyche contained a light side and a dark side. Tie them up, we'll kill them right here. Just like the Jedi hobbits from Star Trek. The film highlights this duality with certain images, such as the white and blue bouquets displayed by purge supporters and Charlie's half charred nightmare machine. March 21st, the date on which the purge occurs, was frequently the date of Earth's vernal equinox, hmm. when day and night were exactly the same length. It's also Karen's birthday. Birthday. But, no but no one needs to get her any gifts or anything. The opportunity to work here is gift enough. Yay. Just as the uh, purge is intended to bring about a healthier and more balanced society, the vernal equinox heralded the beginning of spring, a time of rebirth and renewal of Claritin prescriptions. The date also had significance in Earth's fourth most successful religion. Christians also celebrate the resurrection of young Jeezy on Easter, a date they calibrated using the vernal equinox. Similarly, citizens in the film celebrate the resurrection of their society on Purge Miss Eve with an almost religious fervor. The blue baptisias reference the Christian ritual of baptism, also known as the Dunkaroo. Another focal point of the film is America's problems with social stratification. Though the purge laws are ostensibly race and class neutral, they disproportionately target the disenfranchised, who are unable to afford diamond-edged blades or truffle-infused security systems to protect themselves. The poor can't afford to protect themselves. They're the victims tonight. The film's antagonists are dressed in prep school attire, the garb of the wealthy elite, and they treat 
the hunting of a homeless black non-contributor like just another extracurricular for their college apps. This imbalance echoes the war on drugs in the 1980s, when the clowns on Capitol Hill passed laws that were 100 times harsher for crack cocaine, a drug that plagued poor black communities, than for its overachieving white powder-based cousins. Is the purge really about money? Either way, crime is down. The economy is flourishing. The purge suggests that engaging in and consuming violence will relieve a person's desire yes. to go bananas. B A N A N A. No, I'm making a you. I was making a video. However, it quickly undermines sure. that premise, Sorry, concluding that doing so me. will simply desensitize people and beget even more violence. American streets will be running red tonight when people release the beast in record numbers. Mr. Kelly. Brutal images of murder are juxtaposed with boring old classical music, underlining ah. the idea that violence has Ow. ceased to shock and horrify, and in fact might put you to sleep because it's so freaking boring. boring. In Purge World, humans watch the grotesquerie on TV for entertainment, much as they watch their balls drop on New Year's Eve. <laughs> We're just gonna lock down some Purge events. <laughs> In a sense, the Purge, a violent Ball film in its own right, is a criticism of its own damn self, as it provides an opportunity His for the viewer to so release freaky, some aggression creepy. by like, watching how Olaf's good eyebrows. You guys seen Lemon Snicket? And an analyzing uh, the Purge, I have perpetuated That's the That's Olaf's eyebrows. Whoops. For Earthling Cinema, I'm Garrett Schwermuller. Lock your doors. Hello, Earth enthusiasts. Craving more movie exploration? I am. Click on this sticker to visit Wisecrack's channel page, where you can find Thanks for um, watching my video, guys. If you like this video, like it. If not, if you. Fuzzies, subscribe if you want to. Manifest subscribe anyway, because I'm telling you to. Theorists. Um, the master of overanalyzing characters that's why granddad just opened the door and interrupted the entire video. So hi, granddad. Hey, yeah. All right, all right, granddad. Now you're in the video. Your sound is done. All right, put a thumbs up for my granddad for interrupting the video. Go ahead, granddad. All right, granddad. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Percy Squares, and I'm out of here. Subscribe. And I'm Jane, Baby Jane Salmon, aka aka Baby Jane BJ. All right, guys. I'm out of here. Percy Squares, peace. Until next time, subscribe or not. Nah.